Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my Saturday stream with my friends. And today I have here with me Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Although oh I'm not Landon today. I'm Caesar Flipperman. What? Oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> Who does that make me then? Oh, well, I think that makes you Claudius. I think it His, makes me Claudius. The fun too. little, the fun little, uh, co-host of the hunger games because this is our fandom hunger games episode and what are we doing for this episode landon uh we have picked some of our favorite main characters from 2000 to 2015's fandom quintessential characters of media i would say and we're gonna throw them into the ring today and battle it out for who would fucking win in the hunger games oh my gosh so yes i would love to hear as we're going through this what you guys think so welcome in koneko i saw you with the first and i saw horse riding happened early again today i suspect with how the temperatures are that's probably going to be every week for about the next two months to be quite honest um i would not be surprised considering they've done it twice already oh my gosh and i hope the horsies are okay i know that heat's probably really hard on them and welcome in Lunar. I saw that howl or I heard that howl. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So happy to have you guys here today um, hanging out with us for our 2000 to 2015 Fandom Hunger Games. So this this is the era of fandom where Landon and I became friends and also where we were generally our most active in fandom. So um, if you had a similar fandom experience to either of us, this is going to be all your faves, you guys. It's going to be all your faves. Um, we're going to throw them into a Hunger Games AU. It's going to be really fucking fun. Going to be a blast. Alternate name so, for today stream, the FF Net front page ultimate smackdown. Fuck yeah for another F. Um, yeah, you know, Taylor Swift would win hands down. I feel like Taylor Swift is not 2000s to 2015. Also, I have to tell you guys, not. we did explicitly exclude bandoms because I yep. know that like bandoms, like there was a, a, a pop punk and a, and a goth scene that was huge during this time, but that gets a little bit complicated. Um, So we kept it to fictional characters. Okay, so no bandoms. Um, none, no, no RPF. This is fictional characters only. All right. We said that from the beginning. We wanted fictional. Uh, no, very quickly. Uh, can we talk about Banda? It's a little off topic, but I just, have you, did you hear about this AO3 thing? Tell me about the, I did, but tell us, tell us about the AO3 thing. <laughs> okay, I, I so would love it's, it's to talk about this for a second. It's a fandom adjacent, so I just need to talk about it. I didn't even ask, didn't even ask Karen if it was okay. But it's uh so earlier this week, AO3 for about 20 for about 30 hours was shut down. AO3 is Archive of Our Own, which is a fan fiction website uh that hosts majority of fan fiction online it's for a website. lot of the, it's the website. it is the website for fan fiction. Uh millions and millions of fan fiction. It was shut down uh because of hackers getting into the system. Uh, and at first, the hackers claimed to be a Sudan Islamic radical group uh, who wanted to target the LGBTQ community because LGBT because fan fiction is gay and therefore was going to shut down this because they didn't think it was appropriate and that it was dangerous to people, blah, 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 blah. Well, a bunch of fucking nerds who really really love fan fiction because again AO3 is a volunteer web volunteer funded website run by volunteers uh it, it, it and of course everything that is produced on there is volunteer uh every everybody volunteers in order to write the fan fiction so a bunch of people in the community got together and discovered that this group was actually not an islamic radical group it was a group from russia posing russian government by the way posing as an islamic radical group in order to uh in order to make ties between uh america and sudan higher and more tense so that sudan will agree with russia to raise oil prices against america they fucking came for the nerds as a way to try to have like islamic hate happen and everyone was like nah we're just gonna reverse and hack the russian government instead 
Isn't that so fucking ridiculous? Like my mind was blown. Like I didn't believe it was Islamic terrorists at the beginning. I was like, no, it's not. Mm-mm. I'm like, it's probably a bunch of like fucking aunties or something. Like in my mind, I'm like, it's probably like that. It's probably like some group of like, you know, sad moms that hate gay people or some kind of situation like that. Yeah. Right. That's what I thought was not expecting Russia. Okay. All of us, it was like Russia entered the scene and I was like, didn't think that would be you, but um, that's what happened. And luckily, it was only down for 30 hours, largely because of the dedication of the AO3 volunteers. And um, if you don't know why um, us, you know, 25 plus nerds are so fucking protective of AO3, it's because back in the day, this type of thing would have worked like Russia, right, in this case, but whoever can could have easily was easily able to pressure places that we hosted fan fiction in the past and so much fan fiction of this era, the early 2000s era, was deleted. It is gone from the internet because what? of, yeah, because of groups that were haters against gay people straight up. Even though, I mean, I know fan fiction has a reputation for being gay, but the truth is a very small percentage of fan fiction is not hetero, okay? Most of it is straight. Um, but because it has that reputation, uh, you know, of, of being gay, like it gets targeted. And so AO3 exists specifically because we wanted a place where the fan fiction wouldn't get deleted. And they have a team of volunteers and lawyers that they make sure that everything is on the up and up and that that will never happen. That if a fanfic gets deleted, it's because the author deleted it, not because someone deleted it against their will just because it was too gay or too kinky or what the fuck ever, right? Yes, round of applause for the AO3 volunteers. Thank you so much. Here we go. Let me let me trigger. Let me get the applause. Where is it? We need this. Um, yeah, no fucking AO3 is amazing. Yes, here we go. For you, for you guys. Thank you so much. They got AO3 back up in only 30 hours. Only 30 hours. Amazing. So My it's back. Thing is also yeah. about AO3 is because we just haven't talked about this website. It's such a great website uh, because also uh, every time they do a fundraiser, it's funded like within 15 hours it's insane yes. how many people love this fucking website yes and if you love ao3 too it only takes a 10 dollar donation to be part of their team that's able to vote whenever they have the new board elections like every year every two years whatever it is so yep. um so like if you've never donated before i strongly recommend your, you make your donation 10 dollars so that you can have your vote um it is ao3 is critical to the survival of fandom we couldn't have this episode today without um without websites like ao3 Mm -hmm. um without uh shoot and if her name escapes me the the uh, amazing uh, ineffable throwkey shipper who runs ao3 i can't remember her name but anyways her she's amazing beautiful love her okay so thank um, you. I'm glad AO3 was back up so quickly. It was literally yes. like it it all happened. And then I got up the next morning and then I saw all the aftermath about like it's back up and it was Russia and da 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 da. And I was like, oh my God, that is not where I expected this to go. <laughs> it's insane. But just the power of fandom and uh, how far we've come. And also that I feel like fandom has had its, don't get me wrong, there are certainly some fandoms that are still as young youth. Uh, But there are a lot of fandom in general, I feel like has had its like maturity hit 25 years with like, we're no longer doing that childish shit. Instead, we don't care. We're just gonna hack Russia back. (laughs) Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, there's always been adults in fandom, but it's so much more now because so many of us were able to grow up online, like before fandom was like at conventions and things like that. So you had to live in a major metro area or be able to travel to truly participate heavily. But since the internet, um, now anyone can participate. And so there, there's a lot more fandom elders than there used to be, which makes fandom a, a really amazing um, uh, place as far as like uh, nerd culture goes. And I very much appreciate it. So, yeah. Well, now that we've complimented fandom, let's kill some characters, shall we? Yes. Uh, I think first... Before we do that, do you, is the is the deck up? Yeah, the deck is up. They, awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But wait, Lunar, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see who gets them. Nikki Tuesdays. Oh heck yes. Afatif. Um, Air, um Arya Skywatcher. Nice. Nice. Ninja. Heritage Nomad. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think it's. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's let those play. Club Let's let those little. Gifted a tier one sub to Alpha oh my T. gosh. Thank you. We'll do some pins um, at the, the halfway break. Don't let me forget. We'll put some up for you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Good hype. I love Club that it I love that it's the Sims sound so it's like Genomad. the want is fulfilled over and over. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. If you like it then you should put a pin in it. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. All right. So yes, let's let's get started. So to break down kind of how we did this, um, you know, we didn't want to like go too crazy. Like we really wanted the characters that we picked to be like um, interesting to talk about and like not get too insane. So I just want to acknowledge we have one character per district. Okay. So it's not like a boy and a girl per district. All right. So we picked out 12 fandoms and we assigned them districts. So you're going to see 12 characters battle to the death. This is a, a slightly modified AU. Okay. Uh, we also chose the main protagonist from each fandom rather than uh, the fav fan favorite or our most loved or anything like that. Uh, we chose the character that uh, is either the most pop, like, at, like is the main character who the story is about, or if uh, it is like a duo or an or ensemble cast, uh, then we chose the most popular mm -hmm. of the, um, which I think, I think happens to only two. Yeah, there's the... two fandoms in there where I feel like there is there are other main characters, but we just had to pick one. Yeah, we had to pick one. So yeah. that would that was what we got. Also, in this hypothetical, even though the photos are not, uh, the Hunger Games happens between ages of like eleven or I think it's it's, it's thirteen, like 12, 13, 12. 13 to twelve to seventeen or something like that. It's 12, all teenagers. I think it's twelve to seventeen. So we're gonna age some of these kiddos down. They're still gonna have their they're gonna still have their powers. Or uh, ideas of of who they are, or their skills that they can do. Uh, but we're going to pretend that they're all the same age so that when children are fighting adults, they're actually just fighting other children. Yeah, so they're all teenagers. <laughs> so pretend they're all teenagers with us. Uh, all right, let's get into these victors. Right. Introducing from District 1, the District for Luxury. So hailing from the lap of luxury, he is the leader of the career tribute pack. His special weapon is his wand, but he can also fly on a broom. So hopefully there's a broom in the cornucopia. From District 1, we have Mr. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Listen, I felt like this is the this is the pinnacle of fandom, the most popular and well-known name. He had to be a career. He didn't, not to mention, he literally went to school to learn how to fight. So, sounds like a career to me. Yep. And if you were going to pick a, a luxury uh, fandom, Harry Potter would be the luxury fandom. Harry not Potter only does it have the, the most merchandise, it has theme parks. Most fandoms don't get mm -hmm. that. As well as the most robust um, fan-created merch community uh, that exists, except for maybe one other on here. But um, for the most part, it's, it's Harry Potter. It's the number one in fandom. It's true. Just how it be. Yep. All right. Moving on to District 2 Masonry. Uh, Masonry. She is a tribute from the Masonry District. She is the first to al ally with Harry and form the game's career pack. And despite the slim figure, she's well known as a fighter. I would like to introduce... Buffy Summers. Remember what? this fandom? Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> such a good fandom. Uh listen, we were having a fight competition. We couldn't leave out the Slayer. Mm -hmm. Uh not to mention the popularization of Buffy the Vampire Slay Slayer from the early or from the 90s to the 2000s. Uh huge in fandom. Just a little pre-internet, but huge. It's pre it's pre and beginning of internet. Like Buffy yes. was um early like in, oh. when I view early internet, um, I view it as as Spuffy. It's the Spuffy era. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh but when when uh Angel and Buffy were together, there wasn't quite as much internet stirring because that was a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, give me one second, you guys. I just got a pop up that apparently the Zoom is going to stop. So give me like Two seconds. I'm going to put you on the BRB screen for a second. I think I actually have to, to repurchase my Zoom license. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Whoops. 
Whoops. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So sorry about that. Apparently, I forgot to renew my Zoom and it was going to cut us off in 10 minutes, but it's all fixed. I paid for it Whoopsies. now. Whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> I gave my tribute. I gave my tribute. All right. So District 3 Technology considered the most intelligent of the games, this game's tributes. There are m- many that will be betting on him to win. He is just underneath for winning as uh, just underneath the members of the career pack as far as the betting goes. And that is Sherlock Holmes. We could not do 2000s to 2015 without having Mr. Sherlock. Okay, he was everywhere. I know we've basically forgotten about the fan that fandom nowadays, but like this was like top tier, <laughs> top tier fandom at that this, time. This fandom still holds a lot of sway over my person, my entire personality. <laughs> I love Benedict Cumberbatch just because of how much I love Sherlock Holmes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed you didn't do Super Who Lock as one fandom. Well, we couldn't. We couldn't because then we because we need all three, you know, we for Super Who Lock to be a thing. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I need, okay, we have to move on then. We have to move on. Okay, here we go. District four. Uh, fishing. He is also expected to join the career pack. And somehow before the games, a rumor began to spread that he could actually talk to wolves. It's Mr. John Snow. Oh, baby John Snow himself. For an entire decade, this fandom gripped nerds and normies alike. So we could not not have John Snow. Heck yeah, that's right. I love that howl for, for Mr. John Lunar. <laughs> Heck yes. We love a good, we love a good John Snow. Uh, and maybe he'll come out ahead. He is expected to join the career pack, so... Yep. we'll see all that ice fishing i'm sure has helped him. <laughs> and every games needs a byronic hero for the story so here we go we've got mr sad boy john snow all right district all right five. district five district five tributes from this district are usually known for their intelligence but with him that isn't the case instead he's known for his electric mouse pet that can literally shock others Everyone is talking about how he's going to sneak his Pikachu into the games. From the District for Power, we welcome Mr. Ash Ash Ketchum. Okay, Ash Ketchum, an actual teenager. I know we've gone through a few adults, but um, it's not just Harry that's that's a teenager in in this and in his fandom. We also have Ash in here. So this is literally the biggest fandom. Um, But I feel like in kind of like the the Tumblr-ish fandoms, people kind of forget that this is literally the biggest fandom that exists in the world, period. Um... So we had to yes. have Ash in here since it really started to take off in that early 2000s. It absolutely did. Let it be known that Pokemon is still huge. Uh, it just as I also feel like huge, it, it's one of those fandoms that didn't grow up with its people. Certainly there are still adults who love Pokemon. Uh, but for the most part, it's kind of like at a certain age, you're introduced to Pokemon. It is owns your soul for about four years and then you move on and you forget about it for most oh. people's experience yep so it, uh, what happens is basically like if you're an adult still in the pokemon fandom you're playing the games like you're not watching the cartoon yeah. anymore you're not like watching the movies you might be buying the merch but you're buying like stuffed animals you're not buying like pokemon toys you know what i mean yeah. so like the adult pokemon um, fandom experience is quite different because you're right. It did not grow up with yeah. its uh, with its fandom. It is still it's, targeted at young at kids and preteens in that age. It's exactly the same because yeah. I, as someone who works inundated at the perfect age of which this is targeted with, will let you know that they are still trading Pokemon cards like they are five dollar bills. Uh, my favorite is when that kid brings it in and is like, "This was fifty dollars." and it's like a bent charizard card that was like bought in the store yesterday and it's oh like God. okay kid we all thought we were going to get rich off the pokemon cards as well that's so cute i have a stuffed eevee from the build-a-bear but my best friend's son is watching the show right exactly like an adult would get like the fancy build-a-bear plushie a, a kid is going to be watching the show so yes 100 yes, exactly. absolutely all right uh he hails from the transportation district, this person. He's got a special weapon called a sonic screwdriver. He's quite sure what it does, except that it might do everything. 
ladies and gentlemen, the doctor. <laughs> yes, and of course we had to go with 10 for this as the most popular. So Koneko, I know you're lurking for dinner, but here you go. So um the 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 what is it? It would be the who of the super who lock. Super, super who lock. Uh I will say 10 is not my doctor, 11 is my doctor, but 10 is a close second and is the classic. We mm-hmm. we love some Dev- David Tennant up in this house. And if you really think about the um, Doctor Who revival, the fandom of that, it really centers around this guy. Like it was. 11 is quite popular, but when you think about the fandom overall, like it's about 10. It is. Tennant, Tennant brought it back. Mm-hmm. Smith locked at it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I loved the first season with Nine and Eccleston and stuff, but like, the fandom didn't take off until David Tennant walked on. No. Uh, but also him as transportation, it makes sense. He's got a TARDIS. Right. I love that. So Landon <laughs> picked out all the district's numbers for these and um, and I kind of fleshed them out a little bit. But when I saw her list, I started cracking up at like 10 as transportation, at Ash as power. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm dying. It's too funny. Technology right. with Sherlock. Anyway. Yeah. So District 7 is Lumber. All right. So with the power to read minds, everyone's talking about her. She has a gaggle of diehard fans, and it's not hard to see why. There are rumors that she has other powers as well. After she pulls off the highest score for the judges, introducing Sookie Stackhouse. Okay. Another what? (laughs) Another HBO show that just took the fuck over. If you were there, you were there. I feel like this is even more like what the heck from then like doc not doctor who uh then sherlock holmes where everyone's like we're forgetting about sherlock everybody forgot about true blood uh if you did not watch true blood it is the it is a louisiana uh version of twilight basically mm-hmm. for but adults HBO, but it's for adults yeah oh it's for adults uh hbo sookie stackhouse vampires vampires are uh not secret or hidden uh, they're legal and it takes place in the deep south and I believe the Louisiana south and it is great it's so good trashy show it's, it's so, so and good it is so trashy I will tell you like it did not age well no. um it was it was uh it was very racist and it's still very racist it tries to draw this like really interesting allegory as far as the vampires go but like don't think too hard about it if you do some of the dialogue is really like strange if you think too hard about it but what made this show so popular is how freaking hot everyone is so it's kind of like the way that a CW show is except it's like HBO style where you actually get to see the sex so it, it's like it, that and so it took off yeah i need more of this my hbo shows i'm not gonna True. lie this is what we're lacking i like Same. don't get me wrong i love the last of us it's awesome but i need an hbo show that just makes me not think too hard that makes me go oh everyone's so hot and beautiful in this world yes uh <laughs> and yes. not a total mess <laughs> Yes, I need this. I need another True Blood, truly. Um, it yeah. We have not had a True Blood since True Blood, and I do miss it no. very much. And I'm not sure we could have another True Blood. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what story would actually be, like, would capture it in that way. True Blood was tr- is, is very unique. Very unique in that yeah. way. Yeah, and it was before, I think it was before the age where HBO really doubled down on the fact that they are storytelling like they're they're very story heavy in their shows uh obviously they had some great hits before true blood but i think that like seeing the fan of the true Blood, they're just like we're gonna go with the game of thrones route where it is mm-hmm. lies and duplicity and secrets rather than necessarily relationship drama yeah yeah it's true it's true i don't know if we'll ever get another true blood but if we ever did i would watch the heck out of it I would yeah every second all right district eight textiles no one believes that she can win except she herself she is a complete wild card ladies and gentlemen it's rachel fucking barry do you remember this fandom i remember this fandom <laughs> in this fandom oh my god oh god uh rachel rachel barry is you know she thinks she could do anything mm-hmm. and therefore if you have Ryan Murphy writing the ju- show, she could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. Except god. Reed. Glee, 
this was my Glee fandom experience, okay? I watched the show. The first episode is the best episode, and it only goes downhill from there. Literally, the best episode of Glee is the pilot. Oh. And it just gets worse and worse every season from there. And like it, but it has these shining moments and you just keep watching because you want to see what songs they're going to do. And like all the side, a lot of the side characters are really well acted. And, you know, there's like all these kinds of like positive things about the show. But then there's Rachel Berry, who's the main character inexplicably. I don't know why, but she is, even though it's an ensemble cast. And um, and eventually it just goes down the drain. And what ended up happening in the Glee fandom, the way I, I recall it, at least in the, the role play side of it, is that everybody that was doing Glee role plays was not doing Glee role plays. They were like doing Glee AUs. It would be like all the Glee characters in Pokemon, for example. And that would be like the Glee role plays that you would see because everybody because be the- wanted to play the Glee characters, but they didn't want to have anything to do with Glee. <laughs> It would be the most boring. I I was in a Glee role play, but like it was years after all the characters, so it was all UA, like it was all uh, original characters, uh, OCs and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it's also like if you are playing Glee characters in the contemporary Glee world, it's the most boring fucking shit ever. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> exciting happening other than a music song every once in a while and we all you can't write good music music performances yeah a musicals <laughs> musicals need visuals which role play does not have does not allow for yeah. uh so you know Rachel thinks she can win and good luck to her we'll see <laughs> all right district 9 grain he's used to labor in the fields and he somehow knows how to use a gun something that only peacekeepers carry If there's a gun in the cornucopia, he could get far in the games. Introducing Dean Winchester. Okay, we couldn't not have Super Hulock. Don't doubt. Koneko, I can't believe you doubted us. Of course we have Super Hulock. The heck? (laughs) We got that Super Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Hulock. Dean is a broody and hot, and I have a feeling uh, he and Jon Snow will really like each other or hate each other who knows yep yep (laughs) agree (laughs) all right she began her training as a veterinarian back home she may not be able to fight but everyone is pretty sure she stays out of sight she can survive for long it's meredith gray listen we had to kind of throw in a fandom that's a little underrated that might not be directed towards the typical fandom lives, but also has one of the biggest fucking fandoms of people who would refuse to think that they're a part of the fandom, which is middle-aged white women <laughs> between the age of uh, wh- white women between the ages of 20 and 60. <laughs> when this when this show was hot, it was like the thing of in the the moms. Okay. All moms were in the fandom for um for for this show and they all had opinions about it and i was hooked even okay so this show was when started when i was in college and like during my college years and for a few years after i was super into this show i thought it was really good um eventually it just got a little too crazy for me and i had to stop watching it goes on for like about a zillion freaking seasons i think it's in its final <laughs> season right now um yeah season but, 20 it's yeah. final season yeah <laughs> Season 20. But you know what? Who's still watching it? Moms. White moms are watching this show. Okay. Oh, and then their daughters who grew up watching yes. their moms watch the show, then watch the sno- show when it came out on Netflix mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they love this show still. Yeah. It's a good mother daughter show. It really is. It's very dramatic. It- um, and uh, and the characters are kind of a little bit crazy. Uh, it's good. Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy is like, it's a legitimately good show. It's got a lot of good things going for it. And it is it is a fandom. Even if it doesn't want to refer to itself as a fandom, it is a fandom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All, All right. right. District 11, Agriculture. Everyone seems to love her, even though her whole life tragedy has followed her. She has hardly any family to speak of and even less skills that are useful in the arena. Introducing Elena Gilbert. Okay, you guys know how much we were into Vampire Diaries and all of the spinoff shows and all of that. We have to have Elena in here. Like, especially if we're going to have Super Hulock, we have to have the Super Hulock adjacent Vampire Diaries character, Elena Gilbert. So here she is for the Agriculture District, Miss Elena. 
it's truly the, this was the moment that I was really sad that we had to choose the main character of the show because Elena Gilbert is my least favorite ca- character of Vampire Diaries. It would have been way better if we could have put Catherine, but it just didn't. It didn't follow our rules, and we didn't want to break them or, just for Vampire or, Diaries. Or Damon, or Stefan, or Caroline. All better or Klaus. choices. <laughs> yeah, all better choices. Bonnie, better choice. You know, we could have had a witch. Matt and, is the you know, boring rivaling human. Harry. <laughs> anyway but you know we weren't going to break the rules just for one show so it's elena so we go from one sad brunette to another district 12 cole she hardly speaks so most of the capital doesn't know what to make of her and when she does speak speak she usually stutters what they don't know is that she's secretly actually a vampire miss bella swan Listen, we couldn't have one sad brunette right after another sad brunette, so we let Bella be a vampire. Yeah, I debated hard about whether we would do a vampire Elena and human Bella or vampire Bella and human Elena. I felt like we couldn't do both vampires or both humans. So I was like, no, Bella has to be the vampire because here's the thing. In the books, once Bella actually becomes a vampire, she's like really fucking stoked to be a vampire. It's like she's achieved her dreams and she's like actually feels like she accomplished a goal in her life why she feels that way i mean we haven't ever we haven't dissected twilight but i think we will have to someday um but if you think about that compared to like when elena becomes a vampire like it's just more tragedy for elena which is always which is always how her life is so bella gets to be a vampire and elena gets to be a sad human because she's going to be a sad vampire anyways woo hoo yeah all right that is our victor's So here is our final lineup. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how we think this would happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of said before that Sookie Stackhouse has received the highest scores from the judges after her individual trials. Mm -hmm. Uh, Our career pack is really looking like Harry and Buffy and a Jon Snow might be thrown in there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Our outliers and unknowns are Rachel Berry, Elena Gilbert, and a little bit of the doctor. And Meredith Grey as well. And Meredith Grey as well. Yeah. I also feel like for fandom reasons, the secondary like pack has to be super hulock as far as allyship goes. Well, and I also want to throw in there that I agree that super hulock could be in that thing. I wouldn't be surprised if Jon Snow finds his way from the career pack to that pack as well. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. I kind of feel like he he could potentially switch allegiances at some point. But we have to start at the beginning. So as yes. you guys know, the way every Hunger Games starts is with all of the tributes facing the cornucopia. So Landon, do you think that everybody has their particular items in the cornucopia? Uh, I certainly think that there are items yes towards the towards the cornucopia that are that are there for these people uh however i think that the standout ones are going to be harry's wand the sonic screwdriver a med kit for meredith Mm -hmm. gray Mm -hmm. uh and i think perhaps a gun for dean winchester are we gonna give him a gun I feel like we should like I feel like it's just such so part of Dean to have a gun that um it would really be doing a disservice to him to not give him a gun. I'm trying to zoom in like while you're talking too, so that everybody can see the jam board like really nice and big. So I'm adjusting the I'm adjusting the the OBS just a little bit here so everybody can see. Oh, that thank nice you. Big. OK, there we go. Yeah, I think Dean has a gun. I also think that Harry probably has a broom. But I don't know if they give him a wand, but I just feel like seeing him fly around would be so entertaining that the judges would definitely give, but put a broom in the pile. What do you think? My my problem with that, though, is that the judges, I think, would have a hard time with how uh, out of control that would be. So Harry could just fly away in certain situations with that. He could fly up and fly out of the way and he could hell he could fly up to the top of the dome and possibly damage the dome i i think flying is a lot harder to control it is and they'd have to have like specific traps for him too if they gave him a broom they'd have to have specific traps to knock him back down 
And remember that the game makers have been designing all year and the victors are picked only two weeks before the, the actual game. That's true. So a part of me sits there and says that I don't think he'd have a broom, even as entertaining as it would be. I'm not sure he would. I, I think that they were more likely to give him a wand than a broom. Mm-hmm. I think that could be fair. I think that could be fair because they only have a couple of weeks to decide what to put in the cornucopia. And we also know that Harry, I mean, I know this is a UA, but Harry does have like, even though he is a career, he doesn't like to do the killing himself. Of course not. He wants to disarm. He wants to disarm. He's, all, we know he's all about survival and he'll let Buffy take care of the rest. That's right. Like he's just going to, he's just going to try to direct Buffy and he's not going to get involved unless he has to. Yes. So I, th- I think that they're, that given the wand, especially considering he's not good with any other weapons. I mean, as soon as he, they're going to give him that hope. And as soon as he loses that wand, as soon as that wand breaks, mm-hmm. that's the end of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I definitely also feel like there's like an axe or, or a club or something like that for Buffy. Like, I think yes. that's definitely true. I definitely think that there's going to be like a sword for John. Like that oh, yeah. is that's pretty simple, like in my opinion. Um, I think that's what, pretty standard. Yes. Yeah. And because I think there's always those things. So there's probably like an axe with Buffy's name on it, a sword with John's name, you know, like where it's expected to be for them. Um, But what do you think they put in the cornucopia for Sherlock? What's his what do they put in there that they expect him to go grab? I think Sherlock is all about trap setting. Yes. And uh, and I think that there's probably several backpacks with wires and ropes and other useful things just kind of being able to macgyver traps out of things Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh i don't think there's anything strong enough other than maybe a watson that sherlock would be called to go into the center for Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that if anything sherlock stays out of the cornucopia he knows better than to get in the middle of a fucking Mm -hmm. bloodbath so I think there is a trap pack in there to try to like yeah. lure him in, but I don't think he's actually lured either. I think he bolts it for the woods and he's looking for water, just like Katniss was supposed to do in the books, right? Exactly. I think that's what he's doing. I totally agree. Now, when it comes to Ash, I think he's not able to sneak Pikachu in, but Pikachu's in the cornucopia. I really think that. I think it's in the cornucopia. As soon as Ash, like, um, you know, is is in there in the arena, it's Pika Peep, you know, like screaming for him. I think that's what I happens. Think they, I think that they realize that as as much as we love Ash here uh-huh. in the uh in in the world, he re- they realize that like Ash is not exactly the most well liked amongst uh-huh. the other victims. Everyone People thinks he's a little annoying, a little young, mm-hmm. a little annoying. Uh, and they're like, you know what? We wanna we wanna tug on those emotional heartstrings. We're gonna throw Pikachu in there. Uh-huh. Uh, in no wing up Pikachu, not a survivalist either. Yes, he has electri- electrifying powers. Yes, he can defend himself. But one wrong trap from one wrong trap from Sherlock. One sort of the su- swing of the sword from John. Pikachu's gone, mm-hmm. and then we get a heartbroken Ash. That really plays on the 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 emotions of our watchers and viewers. Yep. Game makers love to tell a good story. Yes, I totally agree with you. So I think Pikachu is in the cornucopia for sure to make Ash go to the cornucopia and actually risk himself. Yes. Yeah. Uh Sonic screwdriver for the doctor. I think yes. for Rachel, she's talked about needing green tea at a certain at a certain level of warm up, and for her vocals, that I feel like that that was that would be in the cornucopia, like a pack. That's for all she's her. talked about needing. Yeah, so there's there's probably a pack for her that's like food and tea and things like that. Um, yeah. you know those sorts of things, like things that she was attracted to when she came to the capital to like um to to eat and what she's talked about. I totally agree with that. Cuz she doesn't have she has, she has like literally lowest score, honestly. Like when you look at the scores, lowest score was Rachel. Oh yeah. No no, no Rachel question. no no one's betting on Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. For Suki, I think that there is also like a more survivalist pack because she has the mind reading and because she has the fairy powers which only the judges know about. Okay, only the judges know about which is how she got the higher score, but she doesn't need any weapons. She just needs things to help her survive, right? So I yeah, think there's just a pack in there for her too. There's like a survivalist pack, very similar to what Katniss grabbed. Yes, uh, yes. As far as with the rope and, and a wa- and a thermos and stuff like that too. Yep, uh, so I, I think so. 
Dean, uh, we said Dean gets his gun. Dean gets his gun, yeah, right? I think, I think, yeah. yeah. We know that Dean can fight with other weapons as well, but guns are his favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that, yeah, gun, some gun and some salt. Yes. Uh, Meredith, I think it's a healer's pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bella? Bella doesn't need anything if she has her vampire powers. So, like, what's in there that entices her to the cornucopia? I feel like maybe there's something in there for her, but maybe she doesn't go to the cornucopia. Like, because I don't think she needs anything in there. I think she knows she needs to run. Uh, I think the judges are hoping that enough of this, the bloody kills will happen and her newbie vampire instincts will be enticed and have to come out that way Mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. i think that they will find very few animals uh for bella to be drinking blood during this and we're gonna starve her out since she can't drink you since she can't eat human food Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and elena gilbert i think that there's like a survivalist pack as well but i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm not sure there's anything she could use yeah so i think that there's i mean there's all the normal like random weapons that they have so like she she might she might be interested in some of those but i don't think there's anything really special for um for elena in the cornucopia that she's like going to be specifically drawn to i agree so based on all of that i think we need to decide who runs to the cornucopia and who flees so we've already said that we think um, Sherlock flees for sure. I 100% agree yes. with that. I think Bella flees as well. Yes. I think Bella and Sherlock definitely flee. Um, probably Meredith is fairly smart. I feel like um, she she might try to go for the survivalist pack, but she's likely to flee as well. I think she's going to know she's not she's not she knows that she's not going to need it until later. Mm-hmm. And I think she would be more resourceful at being able to steal it or befriend people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, to try to get things than try to go into an all out blood room, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. blood fight. Yeah, uh, I think Sookie tries to go for it. Yep. I think Rachel tries to go for it. Yep. I think Ash tries to go for it. There's Ash no has to because the Pikachu's he's in not there. Pikachu behind. Uh, Harry definitely goes for it. Ten definitely goes for it. Sookie definitely go- or uh, Buffy, Buffy definitely goes for it. Yeah, and John definitely goes. For yeah, it. and Dean goes for it. Yeah, so and I I I agree. And there's of course the bloodbath at the beginning of the cornucopia. So here's what I think happens. Dean is incredibly capable. I think Dean gets his gun. Oh, yeah. As one of the very first grabs out of the cornucopia. So he gets that. And I think the very first thing that he does is take out Pikachu. I agree. I think that uh, Dean grabs uh, the gun. I think he also grabs probably buff- like gun in one hand, axe in another. Yeah. Like I think that this is a this is a man who has been fighting his whole life and has trained and is strong and big and large and can do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that he sees rodent and he goes to kill. Uh, they 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 kill those rodents on farms. So yes. I absolutely think uh, Pikachu is gone, and because of that, Ash falls to his knees. And I and I, I I think Buffy comes in and grabs him. And I gets think so him. too. I think I think Dean takes out Pikachu, and uh, and and then like Buffy comes along and takes out Ash while he's grieving. Uh, and I think during that same vein, Buffy gets a two for one and grabs Rachel Berry as she's trying to get the pack too. So Rachel isn't very I do resourceful. Think, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I do think that like Rachel is the second death. I do think that, but I think that it happens at the same time. Like I can okay. see, I could see like John or Ten. Um, taking out Rachel pretty quickly um, in an effort to get more than just their weapon. I agree. And I think it's actually probably going to be John more than 10. Remember, 10 is a pacifist. He is a pacifist. Even in this. Yes. So he isn't going to, he he's going to be kind of hands off. He's a survivalist, but he is a useful survivalist, which means he'll stay around. Yes. Uh, I think, and I don't think I he's, think John, and he's not completely unwilling to kill. Like, yes, he's a pacifist, but the doctor still fights stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so John kills Buffy. 
Bills. Uh, two victors down. Uh, Suki goes in there. Mm-hmm. Um, what are we thinking? I'm thinking. I kind of want she- like Suki and Harry to get into a magic battle. I was gonna, I was gonna say I think that uh, Harry and Suki run in together. Uh, Harry is able to grab his wand. Suki is able to grab a thing. There is a moment of contact. And Suki runs away before Harry is able to do anything. Not yet engaging in her power, but grabbing something that she needs. The survivalist pack that she needs. Yeah, and because Harry's first instinct is to disarm, that's what he tries to do. And And Buffy's able to use that moment. I mean, Suki's able to use that moment to get away. And to to get away, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, So here's my question. The big one. Do we think the doctor is able to get to his sonic screwdriver before Dean kills him? That is a good question because the thing is, I do think he would go for it, but his first instinct, you're right, is not going to be to kill. He's only going to do that if he has to. So like he goes for it, but maybe Mm -hmm. like it just doesn't work out for him. Like he can't, it's a, such a small item like, how is he going to reach it and grab it and, and get away defen- without a confrontation? It's, it's not defensive. It doesn't stop against weapons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that he's quick and he is clever. But I think Dean is a shoot first, ask question later later kind of guy. And so I think it is pick up axe, pick up gun, swing and shoot. So I'm not sure of. about that because I really want Super Hulock to be like, uh, uh, have made that's an true. allyship beforehand. Oh, so that's I don't... true. So maybe there is that uh, that uh, that pre allyship. Yeah. Uh, so so you know like what? if I... so if he is able to. Okay. So Sh- Sherlock has left. I know they're going to meet up later, right? But Sherlock has left because he's too smart for that. Yes. But for ten to get his screwdriver, I think what that means is Dean has to protect him. I think that that I think that he goes to shoot, realizes that it's Ted and stop and stops. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I agree, you're right because I forgot about that that pre uh, pre alliance, uh, and they run off together. Yeah, and they run off together. So then, who else? Who else are we saying runs in? So I'm trying to remember from the ladies. Uh, I think. Did we say that Elena runs away? I, I think Elena think... runs away. Elena and yeah, Meredith run away. I think Elena, away. Elena, Meredith, Sherlock, and Bella all ran. Uh, Suki was able to run after grabbing the pack, so she has a pack. Mm-hmm. John Snow is is there still. Uh, grabs his sword. Um, Harry is there. Gets his wand. Buffy is there. Grabs grabs whatever weapon she needs. She's trained in all weapons. Uh, Dean and Dean and uh, Ten run away as well after grabbing what they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think Ten, knowing that there is this an alliance, grabs Sherlock's tri- trap pack? I mean, he could. Because they're going to go meet so. up with him later, I feel like, because they have an alliance. And they're probably really mad that he ran away. But I, th- I think they would still go meet up with him. I think they would still go meet up with him. Uh, and I think that because they're giving up the rest of the cornucopia uh they're able to grab that one extra thing and then they leave and basically who's left at the cornucopia is the career pack is the career pack mm-hmm. is john harry and buffy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so we've got we've got two different kind of alliances and then we've got four kind of individuals uh running around in the in the forest kind of for like I the agree. first part of the games so so the it's the nighttime and cannons go off for poor Ash and poor Rachel. So if you thought Rachel was going to die first, you were slightly wrong, but you were very close, my friends. <laughs> yeah, no, Ash needed to die first. Uh, this, that was what's going to happen. <laughs> yep, yep. And my understanding of the games is the way it normally goes is the career packs, the career pack will go around and try to find anybody that's solo and kill them off. And that usually the game makers don't have to kind of force people together for the first couple of days because the careers will do that. I agree, but I also think that it's uh, Harry stays at the cornucopia and guards the what they have, the what they have gotten, Mm -hmm. uh, where Buffy and John go go around, go Mm -hmm. off and do that. So we see Buffy and John working together, knowing that there is that that triad that is happening, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that Harry is out protect that is Harry is protecting their goods that they have been able to gather, uh, sorting through whatever it is, organizing all of that. 
So I think that that's, so that's what's happening with the career pack for our super hulock pack, our secondary pack. Um, I think they, they go off, they find, um, they find water. They're able to make a camp. Like the three of them together are incredibly resourceful. I think Sherlock has already done all that. Yeah. And they show uh, and up so and he's like, found water, stumble, you he's guys. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, this is, this is what I was going to do. You're the fighting, you're the fighters. And I do this. Uh huh. And they're real. <laughs> And I think that they're really mad, but they're like, they get over it and they kind of cooperate. As soon as that happens, they're like, okay, we get it. Yep. I think Meredith is also able to run off and like survive Hi. really without too many issues. Yep. Um, I think because of like what I... she knows about healing, like she'll, and, and basically because like she also understands animals very well, like she is able to do things like, you know, catch a squirrel or something like that. You know, oh, yeah. she's like, she'll, she'll be able to figure it out. She, she worked in agriculture. Absolutely knows how to do all of that. Knows what's safe to eat. Uh, I think that she's our plant, our plant expert as well, like understands what's poisonous and what's not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that she's able to kind of put all those uh, studying skills to the test mm -hmm. of that. Um, I think, well, I think that we have a run in between two solos i agree uh and that's sookie and bella i think yeah. run into each other like literally collide into each other bella's running in a little too fast uh they 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 have a run in in a moment and here's my question to you karen do they become allies or do they or are they enemies okay so i can kind of see it I can kind of see it. So I think if they run into each other while there's still like so many people out there, like both of them have like some level of intelligence when it comes to like survival. Like mm -hmm. neither of these characters are like the smartest, you know, they're not the brightest bulb in, in the box, but they're not stupid either. No. Like um, Suki is definitely like, I mean, you think of like that show, like her brother's kind of the dumb one, right? She, she's yes. kind of like more normal level intelligence. And I feel like in, um, in Twilight, Bella is kind of similar. Like she's not like super smart, but she's not dumb either. Well, so I think they have a moment and they have like a rough allyship. I think they also see a little bit of their partners in each other because yeah. Yeah. Suki is used to vampires, both Bill and Eric our vampire she knows the drill she knows that they need to feed she knows what's up with that she understands how vampires work and sees how strong of an ally bella could be mm -hmm. and is also a little curious as to why she can't read bella's mind yes. and bella meets suki and goes hey my husband can also read minds uh -huh. and can't read mine this is something like there's like a girl squad happening right here yep. with this and if you remember from True Blood, fairy blood, which Suki is part fairy, that's where her powers come from, is very enticing to vampires. Mm. So Bella probably has a little bit of like a, oh. A, a like, blood crush on her. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a blood crush. Being, and being they, around Suki is hard, but it's good. Yeah, but it's worth it. And if and Suki probably also knows that if Bella is able to feed a little bit, then she is going to be like so much stronger of an ally. So she's probably willing to like help her out with um with like catching animals and maybe eventually letting her feed. I agree. So I think there's a little bit of an I allyship think, there. I think an allyship happens between these two. And yeah. while that allyship has happening and the careers are on the hunting path, I think they find Elena. And I think they find Elena in dire straits. Like, I oh, don't yeah. think Elena does well. I think she she can't figure out how to find water. She can't figure out how to feed herself. So if they don't find her until day three or day four, she's she's almost like kind of a goner at that point. Oh, I think they find her that first night. I that think that night. she doesn't know how to hide. That they're, they're, they're doing their hunting path around in the night. And uh, they go and she is still running for her life, terrified. The adrenaline has started running off. She doesn't know what to do. And... Buffy is right there, swings at her and takes her out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think Elena survives very long, whether it's by I think it's I think it's those first yeah, I think it's the career path that does it. The career pack does it for her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't have she to give it till because she can't survive the way on her own the way Meredith can. No. Uh we'll just say a career career. I think hunter. it's like it's it's John, it's John and Buffy. 
So it would be like John slash Buffy. Who, by the way, have done her most kills so far at this point. Uh, yeah. But they the would be. Ones. Like, when you look at this group, oh, yeah. like, they would be the ones doing the kills. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Okay. So we've got kind of three groups now against each other, right? I mean, Mary got, is kind yes. of like off on her own, just surviving and hiding. We've got Bella and Sookie doing their thing. We've got Super Hulok during, doing their thing. And then we've got the three careers pack. So at this point, we have a situation where the game makers need to push the groups together um, to make sure that the that they interact. Now, the careers are out stalking. Right. So they don't necessarily have to push the careers in any certain direction, but they need to push some of the other two groups towards the careers. Welcome back, Koneko. We do have Super Hulok here and uh, they're all still alive. So you yeah, haven't missed anything. They formed an alliance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that they don't really need to manipulate the careers at all. So who mm -hmm. they're going to push together is I think that this super Hulak alliance that has happened is there hasn't been much action. We haven't Probably seen not. them in play yet. Uh -huh. And we have this super cool new alliance happening between the two girls and want to test that. So I think that they're going to bring those two groups together. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Let's see if we can meet the these three and this these two so here's what uh, i think here's what i think happens i think that the game makers set out like um a, a, a pack of wolves or or mutts or something like that onto the super hulot camp because the super hulot camp is well fortified it's well hidden no one's finding it they're just chilling in the camp hanging out and hunting and Drink eating beer. and yeah, and it's boring. And so they're like, let's bomb the camp. So they send a bunch of mutts, like a pack of mutts that is that is too overwhelming for Dean to really take on and defend against. And it forces them to have to go on the move again and search for a new camp. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and I think that in this, the two groups collide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I think because the Super Hulak Alliance, I think, is being rather stealthy. I feel like Sherlock knows how to creep around. Uh, Dean knows how to be perceptive as all get out and on the hunt. Uh, the Doctor does as well. He's kind of messing around with his sonic screwdriver. Uh, that I am not sure Buffy... Or not Buffy. I am not sure that Bella and Sookie necessarily know that they're coming. So they don't set a trap for them. No, because that's what I think would need to happen. Like, as far as Sookie and Bella taking these guys on, they would have to see them coming and pick them off individually. Specifically, yeah. they need to pick off Sherlock first. Um, because he's the smart one and the easiest one to get. But I don't But I don't if they don't they see it, that. if they don't see them yeah. coming, they can't do that. I think because I think that as soon as it is clear something breaks out, Sherlock does what Sherlock does best, and that is hides. He disappears for a second. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's he's doing something strategic to either sneak up on someone or do something like that. Uh, but then all of a sudden, like the two girls can't see Sherlock, and mm -hmm. one's got a gun and an axe, and the other one has a tiny little toy. I think Suki. I think either Suki or Bella take out the doctor. I think Suki finally shows her fairy powers and she takes out yeah. ten. I think that's what she does. Like she says, "Oh no!" Like she panics and it's like it's time to show the big guns, and she takes out ten. Sorry, Mister Ten. Uh. Yeah, I think. Let's keep it the same. I think 10, 10 goes the cannon. Uh, yeah. And I think Bella goes to get into it with Dean. And here's my thing. Dean knows how to fight vampires. Yes, he does. Even super fucking strong vampires. Kind of his specialty. This is an everyday thing for him. Yeah. And I think he is able to behead Bella. I think he can too. I think that that he he wounds her no problem with his gun 
and then he's able to go in for the kill and 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 he gets he gets the he gets you know the headshot with his uh with his axe or sword or whatever blade he picked up because we know he picked up a blade as well mm -hmm. uh And then I think when uh, Suki sees her fallen colleague, her fallen alliance, she goes to run yep. and runs into a trap that Sherlock laid very quickly. Doesn't yeah. die, but gets a little hurt because yeah. she's still that hu part human, so she can still get hurt. Yeah. Uh, and she is able to run off limping. Yeah, but she and like but she's wounded now, so she has to like lay low for a day. I mean, she still has like the good healing because of the fairy stuff, but she but it's not like it's not that good. She has to hide herself for a day if she's going to survive. So she's so she's still alive, but she's out for a minute. She's out for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we're halfway or we're down to we're down to seven. So I think at this point, Dean and Sherlock are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for the raid key. Oh my gosh, you guys have come at such a fun time. Um, we are doing a 2000s to 2000 to 2015 fandom Hunger Games and Sean and Freya got married. Who is that? Who is Sean and Freya? Congratulations, Sean and Freya on your wedding. <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. By the way, um, Raiders, I will um yes, fuck yes, Jensen Ackles. That's right. We're 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 doing a fandom Hunger Games, because we just have been doing a, a Hunger Games analysis and we're kind of seeing like we're kind of doing that uh who's gonna win the Hunger Games. So if you can see kind of where we are and now you can place your bets based on who's less. They are some very lovely friends of mine. Oh my gosh, well, I'm so happy for your friends, Key. Um, so Raiders, welcome in. By the way, my name is Karen Terry, and uh, we do all kinds of different streams here. I have a variety streamer. We do a lot of media analysis streams. This year, we're going through all of the Hunger Games books, and this is one of our bonus episodes. Uh, we're doing a Hunger Games um, of the 2000s to 2015 fandoms. We always do some fun episodes like this as well. We also play a lot of Sims 2 on this channel if you like Sims 2, and we play a lot of role-playing games. Tomorrow, we are actually going to start playing through Final Fantasy X 2. If any of that interests you, uh, please drop me a follow. I would love to have you in my community because I know Key is super cool, so I know you guys are super cool as well. So thank you again. Supernatural Dude is my bet. Okay, we got to vote for Dean today. Hey. We got to vote for Dean. Ooh, I love Wait, what that. Is what we did should I miss? probably Let fill me them in up. on on what we have for a second. Yeah, if Jensen doesn't win, rigged. Okay. All oh, right. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So to catch, I you don't guys, know. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight that a little bit. I'm gonna be like Buffy. I'm being Caesar, but I'm like Buffy is Buffy is just Buffy is a female deep, but better. I mean, a lot of CW shows are inspired off of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, including Supernatural, including Thanks. Vampire Diaries. So where we are now, just to catch you up, Raiders, is Meredith Grey is off hiding and surviving um, because she's like, she's really good. Uh, she's still like a, she was training to be a veterinarian. That's like her backstory. So she's, I mean, oh, they're all kids, by the way. They're all teenagers, despite what the pictures look like. Um, Suki uh, was wounded by a trap that Sherlock set. And so she is off hiding and healing. Uh... Uh, Dean and Sherlock are in an alliance together. Dean, though, is really angry at Sherlock right now because uh, they just got into a fight with uh, Bella and Suki and Sherlock ran off. Now, it turns out he ran off to set a trap, so it turned out to be good. But Dean feels a little abandoned. OK, he has a yeah. lot. He's a lot of issues. He's not cool with that. And this is the second time Sherlock has done that. So he's real freaking mad. But they are still technically in an alliance. And then our career pack is Harry, John and Buffy. All right. And John and Buffy are out stalking, looking for people to kill while Harry protects the cornucopia, which the career pack controls so that you're all caught up. That's where we are. Uh, and Harry does have his wand. Dean does have a gun. Sherlock does have his trap pack. Yes. Uh, yes. And John has the, a sword. And John has a sword. Uh, yeah. Those are the the cornucopia prizes that tempted them in. And those are the ones that ended up getting them. Uh, Buffy has an array of weapons in which she can just be a badass and use. Yes. So I think there there's now a lot of conflict between Dean and Sherlock. They're arguing a lot. Great for the cameras. Yeah. They love it. That's wonderful. Now here's the thing. Sherlock, I feel like, is a pragmatic guy. Mm -hmm. And he would be weighing his options. Mm-hmm. Yep. As one to of their pack is not. dead. One of their pack yeah. is dead. So he's not as on board with an alliance of just one person. So he's, and, he's probably and, considering going off on his own for real this time. Yeah, I think and I think Dean is not a Watsonish 
kind of character Mm -hmm. 10 very much would go along with Mm -hmm. with sherlock's uh uh, you know needs and his high maintenance-ness and dean is not that and doesn't understand that and i think sherlock's i think sherlock uh considers whether or not killing him would be the smart move decides that there are still too many that it is better to have strong allies killing like strong people and fighters killing each other rather than taking one out so early in the game and i think sherlock leaves in the middle of the night so that dean wakes up alone Mm -hmm. and on his own Mm -hmm. so now dean's real mad and alone yeah oh real mad and alone and no more alliance the only alliance that we're seeing is uh the careers yes Uh, and so so all the alliances are gone so during this time i think at this point Meredith is kind of like she's like worried about her level of supplies because it's been several days at this point. And so she slowly makes her way back to the cornucopia and she pulls a fox face. So she figures out how to get around Harry's uh, defenses of the cornucopia that he has set up with his magic wand. And uh, she's able to sneak around and she's like every day just taking a little from the cornucopia so that they don't notice and then going back to a hiding place that's close to the cornucopia. So she is there and they do not know it. Now here's my question. Who finds Sookie first? Mm. Meredith or the careers? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question. Because Meredith isn't going around. She's she's found a, a fox den, for lack of a better word. She's yes. found a she's found a den almost and has been stealing and coming off and is, is surviving. She has her med kit now. I feel like she has all the things that she needs. Uh, but she isn't really exploring the area. So that would mean Sookie would have to stumble upon Meredith. Yes. Or has or has Sookie hunkered down in her in being hurt and John and Buffy have to hunt her out. So I think that the game makers are definitely going to be the ones that make this decision. They're going to try to force somebody out because Sookie's going to hunker down for for a day or two while she heals. But then she is going to get back up and start exploring and realize because she's going to have to get, you know, gather more food, hunt for more food, collect water again, things like that. And I just don't see Sookie as the kind of person that's willing to just sit there in a place the way I think that Meredith is. I think that Sookie is just a little bit um, more active than that. So I do think that like after a day or two, Sookie's running around like doing those things again um, and looking for stuff. And I I, what I wonder is that does Sookie in in like um, in like wanting to know like where the careers are and what's going on with that do kind of what Katniss did and like end up making her way back to the cornucopia to see like what's up with there and assess the situation to figure out what to do next. So I think we end up with Meredith and Sookie at the cornucopia. And I do think that Sookie notices Meredith first. Okay. Okay. I think that, um, I think that it would have to be a little bit more forced by the game makers. Yeah. Because Sookie was in the cornucopia when the, when, uh, when there was that bloodshed at the very beginning. So she knows how dangerous it was. Meredith did not So her going back to the cornucopia makes a little bit more sense. I think, I think the game makers might have to force Sookie a little bit more to the cornucopia, but maybe force the others with like a prize of some sort or some, or maybe there is, so maybe I don't think we're we have to call early. I don't think we have to call for a feast yet. I think we can a do feast, something yeah, okay. like, um, like a fire trap or something. So like okay. maybe like where Sookie is hunkered down. Cause she hunkers down for a few days to heal. Maybe they're like, she's healed enough. Let's light it on fire. And maybe they force Sookie- her in that direction. I like that. And maybe yeah. like at the same time, forcing Sherlock out too. I think that they're tired of the of the hiders on the outskirts. And I think Sherlock is probably one of them. I'm and sure so, that he is. I'm sure that I he is. I don't think they cross paths, but I think that it uh, it's a two for one. Yeah, like they're pushed in the same direction because yes. of the game makers. They're like, we can't have this many hiders. It's too many. Yes. So they push those two out. Uh, and Sookie stumbles upon Meredith. And Meredith, yes. I think stitches her up yeah yeah and so now they have a small allyship yeah Um, i think it's a little it's a little untrusting it's a little like we're gonna weigh each other's options but what can you give me what can i give you sort of thing 
Uh, Suki, I think, shows Meredith her powers and goes, like, I can protect you if you Mm -hmm. can help me steal Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and get things. Mm -hmm. And so they have a nice little camp going. But I don't think, I think that Sherlock on his own, I think he believes he's a little bit smarter than he actually is. He kind of needs a Watson. I think he kind of needs it. He gets a little cocky. Yes. And so I think that it doesn't take long for there to be an encounter between Sherlock and then Meredith and Sookie. And Ooh. I think that they have a confrontation and Sookie takes out Sherlock with her fairy powers. Like they catch him trying to steal as well. And they're like, oh, no, no, this is ours. And if you're not going to cooperate with us, we're going to take you out. And they take him out. Now, here's, I love this, but I think what is happening near the same time or somewhat near that same time is Sherlock has set a trap near the cornucopia yes yes and I he think has one of our fun careers falls into it and dies oh my gosh so okay. while so while Sookie is taking out sherlock because i agree that that happens one of the careers falls into whatever pit sherlock created and is is killed okay so i think because like Harry has been able to kind of like sit pretty and get fat and just hang out at the cornucopia and protect it. I honestly think it's Harry because it's his job to do patrols. So I think Harry falls into Sherlock's trap. I love that. And John and Buffy come back from a day of stalking and hunting to find Harry dead. Like they just, they find him. Uh, I think that's awesome. Sherlock kisses. Yeah, so he he gets a he gets a, a post he gets a post mortem kill kills Harry after he dies. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we've got John and Buffy allied. We've got Sookie and Meredith allied, and we've got Dean on his own. Dean is the only one not in the cornucopia area. So what happens now here's, next? Now here's the de- deal. I think at this point, Buffy sees how many are dead takes in the odds and goes John I don't think I need you anymore yeah I think so because from Buffy's and perspective because Buffy doesn't know about Sookie's fairy powers so from her Mm-mm. perspective the only actual contenders left are Dean and John yeah and she wants to make it a one on one between her and Dean and I but here's the thing though I don't think she kills him because I think John kind of knows something's up and I think they fight, but I think that this is the end of the Alliance and they split and all of a sudden the cornucopia is abandoned Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there are no, there's no more career Alliance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, So they they, they they leave like, if I see you again, you're gone. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a, Yeah. Yeah. I think I think John knows when to retreat and sits there and goes, I am a I'm a good warrior and I know how I'll get the upper hand next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they split up. So the only alliance that's left now is Meredith and Sookie in their little camp near the cornucopia. So even though they're not really controlling the cornucopia, they are the only ones still left near there. Yes, but I think. When Meredith goes out to try to find something. Dean stumbles upon her. Yeah. And Meredith just doesn't come back. And Sookie see hears the cannon and then sees her picture in the sky that night. Yep. All right. We are down to our last four. We have got our top contenders of John, Buffy, Sookie, and Dean. I think now it's time for a feast. So they've replaced the cornucopia um, with the feast. They've The game makers have come in when no one was looking and removed everything from the cornucopia, replaced it with all new stuff, and they have called them for a feast. At this point, Sookie's wound is still there, but she's basically healed, um, but she is at a disadvantage. Uh, Dean, he's still doing really well. Um, I think John, bullets. yeah, but he's low. He doesn't have any with no bullets left. You think no he bullets. used his last one? I think one? I think I think he has his axe, but I think he is low on bullets. So he, mm-hmm. I think Meredith was his last one. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dean's Dean's guns just for pistol whipping. Now he can't use it. Um, so well, unless, he, and then maybe the feast offers him more ammunition. Yeah, maybe there's ammunition at the feast. So, so we have, so we have these four that are going to come gather for the feast. Remember, Suki is at the most disadvantaged because of her, uh, because of her inj her past injuries. However, she has the fairy powers, and these three, the only one that knows she has them is Dean. Okay. Dean is the only one that knows she has the fairy powers. John and Buffy don't know. So from John and Buffy's perspective, Dean is the most competition. But G Dean knows the truth is that uh, Sookie is the biggest competition, actually. Which is, which is why I think when Sookie runs out first, mm -hmm. Dean holds back mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to go up and fight against that. And he lets mm -hmm. Buffy take that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think... That we have a confrontation between Buffy and Suki, and I don't think Buffy makes it out. I think the powers yeah. surprise her. It's not the type of thing that she's used to dealing with. Now, no. if she had well, known she Suki was a fairy, it would be totally different. But she has no idea. Suki did a good job keeping that shit under wraps. She I basically killed say, everyone that found out. It is very canon for Buffy to underestimate her enemies constantly. Always. Uh, Always. Not Buffy kills. Suki kills. Yeah, Sookie kills. Not Buffy kills herself. Sookie kills. Uh, but I also think John sees and now knows. Yeah. So now Dean and John are thinking that Sookie is the biggest threat to them. And that um, Dean now knows he needs to come take her out. So I think what happens next is is Dean actually comes with his axe and gets in a hand-to-hand -hand situation with Sookie because he's able to get close while Sookie and Buffy are together. So now the only way, like now that they're close, they're a lot more evenly matched and they actually have like a real like fight fight. Okay, like there's think, like some exchange there in their, in their confrontation. And I think Dean is the better fighter. I think he is. So I, I think, think that, that he takes her out. He takes um, out. He takes I, out Sookie. And I don't. I, I mean, it's not like a just like he he swings and he and he hits. Like there's a confrontation. Oh yeah. There's like there's like a bit of wrestling that goes on there. There's like a there's like you, when you're watching it, you're not sure who's gonna win. But I think Dean eventually comes out on top. He simply is the more skilled fighter. He simply has more stamina, and that's where how it goes. And I think he's able to get those bullets. Yeah. So that when John approaches. And it's the final two. We Still have shot. a sword and it. We have a son and a sword and a gun. Yeah. Now here's my thing. John is also incredibly strategic. But the he problem is, is Westeros' best fighter. So does he sneak up on Dean? I don't think he does. So I think this is the problem with John that he does in the show, and I think he would do it here too. He struggles to make decisions until the last minute, and so like he actually watches the Sookie and Dean fight and he doesn't come in until it's done. And that's his fatal mistake. So Dean is able to have time to get the bullets and pop and, you know, reload the gun as John is approaching. And then he can get the kill shot before John actually closes the gap. He just waits too long. John waits too long. And I think that makes Dean Winchester the winner of fandom hunger games so much like as he is likely the most popular character on tumblr <laughs> he also wins the hunger games <laughs> he, has, he he knows how to deal with magic nothing takes him by surprise he uh is an incredibly skilled marksman an incredibly good close-up fighter yes. like he just has all of the all of the needed ingredients to just kick ass at this game and right. i think he's the only one here other than maybe buffy that would have just killed pikachu right off the bat right and <laughs> everybody because else would have had the gun <laughs> and because of the gun he's he's able to do it if we didn't give dean a gun buffy would have killed pikachu but yes Dean got the and gun, think, so we kill Pikachu. And I also think, but I also think if we didn't give Dean a gun, he might have still ended up in the top two. It just would have been a very different fight between yes. John and him. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. So, yeah, I think no matter what, whether you give Dean a gun or not, I think it's more interesting if you give him a gun. Whether you give him a gun or not, I think he still wins. I think so. Yeah. 
All right, you guys. So that that was it. That was our that was our 2010s to 2015s <laughs> fandom Hunger Games. So just to go through the the list again while it's on the screen. All right. So the first the first death was Poor Ash by Buffy. Ah. The second death was Rachel Berry by by John. The third death was uh, Elena Gilbert. John and Buffy ganged up on her. So it's unclear who actually got the kill shot, but it was it was those two. The fourth um, uh, confrontation between um, between Sookie and uh and the um super hulak group and uh, unfortunately and ten bella, dies yeah. from that and from that same confrontation uh bella dies from dean all right so so each of the the groups gets one taken out from that the sixth kill is uh is sookie kills sherlock um over some like uh you know trying to get steal from the cornucopia the seventh kill is uh, is Harry. So at the same time, Harry falls into one of Sherlock's traps, unfortunately, and Harry dies by Sherlock's hand, posthumous, because Sherlock was already dead at this point. Um, our eighth death is Meredith. So while Meredith is out, you know, uh, gathering for for her and Sookie's alliance, Dean gets her. Uh, sorry, Meredith, you survived a very long time, but it wasn't going to happen. Ninth is uh, at a final confrontation at the feast, Sookie takes out Buffy, and then Dean takes out Sookie, and then Dean takes out John. So that's it. That's the 20, 20, 2000s to 2015 fandom Hunger Games. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for the applause, Lunar. I heard that, and I loved all the applause for this stream. Um, as you guys know, that means Landon gets to live another week, so we love that for her. <laughs> So, oh, all right, you guys, what do you think? If you were watching the VOD on YouTube, I would love if you could comment down below. If you agree with our kill order and who gets who, we'd love to hear your theories for this group and what they would do in a Hunger Games situation. Um, Landon, do you have anything else you would like to add to this? I don't think so. This was a lot of freaking fun. Yeah, this uh, is it's so good. This is this is really fun. So let us know if you want to do something like this in the future. I don't yes, know. Absolutely. I, I know that this was Hunger Games based, but I'm always down to to rank characters and a fight to the death. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. For you guys watching on YouTube, I'm gonna just go ahead and stop the recording here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. Woo!